This is Tom. I'm standing here next to my MGB, my 1980. Hey, you know, a while ago I told you about the, down here this uh, breather plate, this cap that fits on the side of the block and the trouble with the long bolt going through it and, and nesting it down there. I hope I mentioned that I put I sealed my, uh, when I built that cork gasket, I really sealed it on there. And just like doing the uh, valve cover gasket, once I sealed it, I let it set for a day <laughs> before I put it down. You try to, you try to put a, a slippery gasket on that cover and get it down between that manifold and the block and get that big bolt in there. Man, you got your hands full. There's just no way in hell you're going to do it. So one of the easier ways is to set the gasket, grease it up, <laughs> we stick them, and put it on the cover and let it set overnight and have it an integral part of the cover before you try to maneuver it down in there in that tight confined area. Okay, enough of that. Okay, so we already talked about the uh, the breather plate and the side of the block and the problem with the long bolt and the problem with the tube and the, the gasket nestled and all that. On top of that tube comes a rubber hose. Comes around like this. Usually goes to some emission control that you have in. Some ineffective emission control because Every the cars that I get in the MGBs, I, I have a real problem with eyes watering and sniffling and stuff. That just I think I have an urgent, uh, a real reaction to the, to the odor of exhaust. At any rate, I bought this canister. See, the, the hose comes across. Uh, the vapor here that comes out of there is kind of moist. The, the oil is churning around inside the engine. The engine is trying to breathe. Well, the air that comes out is all it's it's saturated. And uh, a lot of people put just a, a, a filter or something on there just to, to uh, try to stop the oil like the old tractors had and old forklift trucks and that type of thing. It just, it just uh, spewed that fume out in the atmosphere. Well, that isn't the way you do things today. That's why we got so many intense emission controls on the new vehicles. This hose I have going over here and I mounted a capturing device uh, right here next to the radiator. And that... I just had to drill a couple holes to the radiator plate there, that, not, not the radiator, <laughs> the plate next to it. And uh, this bracket that goes around, it comes with it. Down beneath, on the bottom of it, I'll, I'll show another picture up above uh, on this video so it shows it better than this camera is. Uh, you, you tighten the belt up on it, you mount it, it's got a drain uh, uh, hole down below, a little stop device on it, and uh, you feed the... Uh, you feed the exhaust that came from the breather. See, that exhaust comes in the side here. There's baffle plates inside to stop that moisture from trafficking. So it, it puddles down into the reservoir. Now, it's not much. You know, it's just a little drip here, a little drip there. It may take you six months before you even get anything out of it. But the rest of the air travels upward. And it comes up, and, and, and they usually had on top, when you buy it, they have a big stand-up uh, filter. Well, that is what I don't want. I don't want a filter on there, and I don't want that air going out in the atmosphere and drifting back to my driver compartment, right? Okay, when you buy it, here's the sales slip, and there's the name of the company, R.A. Uh, Hoare. It's a different spelling for Hoare than what you're used to, I think. H-O-E-R-R. -R. <laughs> now, the price to that thing, uh, I'm looking for it. It isn't written on here. Oh, I think I wrote it on there in pencil. Oh, you ready? $107.58. Okay, you're going to say I'm nuts, right? Well, let me tell you something. That exhaust from that breather pipe goes into there. Uh, whatever it does, we want to call it. It separates it. The moisture falls down. The air comes up. I took the filter off, I put a cork in it, right? It's a rubber cork, and I reamed the hole out bigger, put an elbow in, just because I had to limit my head height. You know, it was getting a little too tall. I want the, I want the bonnet to come down, you know, it, and you're fighting for space in here. So you want to do kind of a neat jab, you know. Now it comes out of the top, and where is it going? It goes around here. I'm going to have to move around the other car, the other side of the car so you can see it clearly. Here I go, don't get dizzy. Can you see that black? All right, here's the hose coming out. I'm going to run my hand right on it. Now it comes around. It's coming right there. Goes in there. It goes into this black reservoir, this, this black canister. Does that look familiar? There's two of them on the old MGs, you know, 
Look back in the history in your catalog and you'll see that those charcoal canisters sold for $99. It's got little charcoal beads inside of it. And they just gulp down the, the horrible taste and smell of that exhaust. That's the whole idea of the charcoal. So the whiff of air that is, comes out of that oil separator canister comes over and feeds in into the bed of charcoal on this big expensive canister. Comes out the top of the canister and there again it has other holes uh, for what it was originally intended. I screw plug them. I'm just coming out the center with a hose. You know, you, it's a pretty sizable plastic stem on there. So I just, let me get up, up a, maybe a hair closer to it. There. Ooh, I did lost my focus there. So uh, I just took some uh, screws and put a little uh, cement underneath the head before I drove them in there. Screwed them down and they, they just sealed it off. Now this hose is, I think I put an elbow on it too. I think I, uh, I slipped an elbow over that stem, glued it on, and then put, a, put the hose and the hose clamp on, and the hose is going to continue. It comes out of there, it goes down, you lose it for a while, it comes back up. Well, I'm going to tell you the secret. It comes into the carburetor. Hold on. i got to move again. This gets difficult for me, not for you. You're just sitting there watching. Up, it, up the hose comes. Now it goes in the, underneath this darn uh, Weber carburetor. This is one reason I don't like about it. It comes up underneath there, and there's just a little flimsy entrance pipe sticking down. So you have to slip your hose up to that. Now, okay, all that's the hard part. I'm going to tell you some good news before I continue. Well, I gotta take, I'm, I'm going to show you the inside, so I'm going to have to take the, uh, the uh, uh, filter cover off. So we can look inside, you are going to be surprised when you see this. You're going to think I'm nuts. But I tell you, I can't stand that odor. i got to get rid of it. But let's get back here for a second. That canister, I told you, was $99, right? You could you, look it up in your catalog. Moss or Victoria, they both got them. Maybe $5 difference. <laughs> I found it on eBay. Some guy had it on there. and. I, we had it, the price starting bid was $9.95, $9.95. I stayed up that night. I got my finger on that damn buy button. I was just waiting and waiting for that auction to end. And in the last five seconds, my finger was pounding that keyboard. I got that $99 canister for $9.95. What a deal. <laughs> that's probably the best investment I put in this car. I paid dearly for the other one. <laughs> I made 107 I told you, for the other uh, separator canister. Well, add the two of them together and divide it out. Uh, I came out okay, all right? Okay, let's follow the hose that came out of the charcoal canister. It went up to the carburetor. Hold on, I'm going to pull the cap off the carburetor. <laughs> Are you ready for a real treat? Oh, see that pipe in there? Look at that. Going down, down into the throat of the carburetor. Oh, this is, this needs some explanation, doesn't it? I got to get this thing. I, I keep touching that damn trigger. Okay, here's a problem. A problem in the engineering of this carburetor. You pay these people all this money to design things, and they don't, they got their foot up there, you know. Look at this. <sighs> Where that pipe came up, they put that pipe so close to the perimeter right here that they put it so close to the perimeter that your gasket came and fit on. You know, it, if, if I didn't have that pipe there, this gasket, the size of the, uh, of the seating on that gasket, will literally cover a portion of that hole. It's so stupid. So what you got to do is you got to take the gasket, get out here in the sunlight a little bit. Okay, see where I niched the corner out? See? Let me get down here this way. Am I getting it? There you go. See, I galled it. I chewed it out with a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. I just had to, to get so it sits down on there like this, that that corner is free to let that pipe come up through there. What a dumbass idea. Whoever put that hole around the perimeter of the area. Look at all the space they had inside. Look at the, look at the land area in here. 
They could have moved that entrance thing way over here. Yeah, what a bunch of yo-yos. At any rate, what is that? This copper tubing. I put a little uh, quarter-inch copper tubing on there. Got it soldered on. Got it coming across. Goes across here. It's rigid. You know, it's not going anywhere. And I got T's. I had a T uh, here and an elbow there. And they go down inside. They don't touch my choke uh, flutters. They don't touch the choke. But they, uh, I got them aimed down in there, the depth of the elbow. So they got a good head start going down in the carburetor. So what have I done? Well, I've taken the exhaust, the putrid, smelly, stinky exhaust from that engine breather, contained it, I've sealed the bonnet, of the uh, cover on the side of the block. I got it sealed tight. The exhaust comes up through there and it always leaks up. It's coming, the engine's got to breathe, and it comes up to the exhaust line here that usually has a filter or goes to your emission control. I fed the hose over to my oil separator. It, it, it kind of takes the moisture out of the out of the vapor. It comes up off the top, comes over to the charcoal canister where it's separated. Uh, the odor, it becomes less odoriferous. <laughs> It just gets the stink out of it, and it comes up out of that into the bottom of the carburetor, misses the filter because I hacked the filter up a little bit. I haven't destroyed it, and it's still effective. And it comes across here underneath the bracket, the bracket that holds your cover on, and snakes its way over there and goes down both throats. Now, that's important. You want it feeding both throats. That way, it creates an equilibrium. You know, you don't want to feed all this residue or odor into just one or two cylinders. <laughs> that isn't fair. You know, that's the trouble I had before when I tried to use the other system that uh, MG's put on. At one time, down here in the intake manifold, uh, you can see a, a hole right there. You can see my plug. See that shiny plug right there? Right there. I drilled and tapped a hole in my intake manifold, and I went back to those earlier years when they used to have a stand-up valve on there. And I ran that for a couple of months. You know, fed, fed that hose out of, the breath, out of the breather cap, this hose here, fed it right over and right into my intake manifold. The trouble is, uh, it, it wasn't equalizing the engine. The back cylinders got all the crap. <laughs> you know, it, it, just, it just isn't a good idea. It just didn't want to run nicely. It's much nicer to bring that residue, and it's not, it, it's, it's not, that uh, wet or damp or uh, injurious to the vehicle. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's better to get it back here at the origin of the carburetor so it has a chance to blend, to mix, and get into all the vapor of it to be spread around through the whole engine. And th that's my story. I, I can sit in the car now and my eyes don't water. I'm so pleased with this. But it's a lot of work. What, what did it cost me? Oh, oh man. You know, add it all up. You know, it was an expensive deal so far, but I have to admit it works. So I don't begrudge paying it one bit. I'll talk to you later.